This is One on One. There he is, back by popular demand, Ernie Anastas, Emmy Award-winning anchor. Fox 5 News here in New York. Good to see you. Good to see you, Steve. This is like old home week for us. It sure is. We love being it. together. We have you on our newscast talking about political issues and other things. And now here we are doing a little reverse. Now I have you in yeah, the hot right. seat, right? Uh, by the way, people can watch every night, 5 o'clock? Yes, 5 o'clock on Fox 5. Love it. I enjoy it. It's, uh, it's just, you know, so important on a day-to-day -day basis to be able to communicate with an audience. And you know, I've been doing it a long time, 35 years in New York. No, it's not. And I, yeah, 35 years. And, and it's like, sometimes I can't believe that that much time has gone by. I started in 1978, right across the street at Channel 7. I mean, right over, news. literally, exactly. by the way, folks, we're at 66 yep. in Broadway here yep. in the heart of New York City, uh, Lincoln Center. And, and Ernie's right, right yep. across the street, ABC. ABC, Channel 7. That was in 1978. And I, I really enjoyed that time. And, and I enjoy being here and looking over there and having fond memories. Isn't that interesting? By the way, Darry's, uh, Ernie's on every night with Darry Alexander. Chemistry. Talk about yeah. that. Because you, yeah. you've, had, you've been on lots of different teams. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, I, I, I was with ABC. And then, you know, they made me an offer that I couldn't refuse, as they say, at CBS and went there for several years and had a wonderful time. I worked with uh, Dana Tyler and worked right. with Michelle Marsh, Carol Martin, at Channel 7, of course, the infamous, the great, the lovely lady, Rosanna, Dana, Dana, Roseanne Scamadella. Wow. And so she was terrific, and Kaidi Tong as well. And then from uh, CBS, there was a nice overture to come over to Fox, and I joined Fox and have been working with... Rosanna Scotto. The best in the morning over oh, at Good yeah. Day, Good Day New York. Lady. And over with Greg Kelly in the morning. Yep, with Greg Kelly and, uh, and Darry Alexander at uh, 5 o'clock. So I'm enjoying it. And I like the schedule. After doing the news for many years, uh, 11 o'clock and 10 o'clock for 35 years, it's nice to have that evening break. And I love doing the 5 o'clock and having the opportunity to do other things as well. Some of the positive series I like to do. We'll talk about that. Yeah, I enjoy it. By the way, we should let folks know that it's about 6.30, 6.45 in, in the evening. Ernie just got off the news, 5 to 6 o'clock, shot over here to Lincoln Center to do this. So we really appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, biggest change, before we talk about positively, Ernie, sure, sure. biggest changes in local news. You've right. been part of it for a long time. You've seen a lot of changes. Other than the digital revolution mm -hmm. and the fact that people can walk around and get news and information, yep. you know, on all mm -hmm. sorts of devices, mm -hmm. biggest changes? Access. Tremendous access. Uh, when I was across the street, when we talked about Channel 7, we pretty much had just a few channels on the air, and we didn't have the Internet. We certainly didn't have cable. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the competition. So uh, we also didn't have access to a lot of the stories that were available to us on an international level from satellite services and other feeds. So when we were doing local news, let's say in the 70s and 80s, uh, mostly in, in, in the 70s, you didn't have the opportunity to really reach out and go live from any part of the world like we can today. You didn't have the, uh, the opportunity to hear from reporters and mm. comments from people um, from different sources. The, the content now has changed tremendously. When we go on the air, it really no, no longer is a local newscast. It really is a world newscast because our content goes from the local stories right. to a national, to an international story. Um, that has changed dramatically, and that means that you have to have, this is an interesting line, um, one time someone said, if you really want to be a good anchor, you should be a, a mile wide and an inch deep. In terms of information? You need to have that sort of information available to you. So when you go yeah. on the air, you can really talk about anything. We can go on the air and be told that there's a, a major story somewhere in the world. We have to say something. And you know what's so interesting about that, Ernie? We were, we're, this, we're doing this in late 2013. Yep. Ernie and I were together on election night, a yeah. uh, pretty significant election sure. night, 2013, the mm -hmm. governor's race in New Jersey, New York City, uh, mayor's race. Uh, and Ernie, I'm there, there on Ernie's left, and Darry's on the right, and literally, Ernie's got his... It's got, it's got his I've notes got my, there, but his yeah. iPad's right there, and you're sure. working it right. because... Yeah, it's a, well, it's a combination of having the iPad there and also our, our regular computer because I can access information anytime I need it. If you're talking about someone, I can look up whether it's a bio or an update on, on particular details that I'm looking for, and it's available to me, and it, it takes a second. I also have access to whether it's other channels and other sources, or Associated Press or uh, Bloomberg News, whatever it happens to be, it's at my fingertips. Has it changed? It's interesting. In many ways, it's changed the role of an anchor. People think, oh, you're a news reader. That's just not true. No, at one time, it was sort of like that because you did read the news. 
Now you're more than that. Now you have to actually report on the air because we have breaking stories every day. Mm. If we have, let's say, a major fire or something along those lines, we're on the air, we're doing interviews with people who are coming to us either from a remote location or a telephone, a beeper as we call it. So you have to be developing that story on the air as a reporter. This is how we all start. We all started as reporters. So now we're, we're back doing it, but we're doing it in front of the camera uh, in a studio. Real quick on positively earning. Yeah. What is it and why is it so important? I love this. This is my mission. I am looking to just get more positive stories on the news. I think we need the balance. We reward a lot of bad behavior. We all know that. Yeah. Exactly. And this positively earning is something that I've really branded. I'm doing it on Channel 5 at 5 o'clock. We have interesting features. We also have a, a minute of positive news on WOR Radio. I write for Resident Magazine. And I'm trying to bring in some balance to our coverage so that people will know that there are good things happening in the world in, in different areas, whether it's health and education, technology, uh, social change, so that people can say, wow, I didn't know that, and I'm glad that I do How know that. How do you find that. the stories? Uh, it, it's not that difficult because we have access. I can go online and start looking up a subject that I like. For example, I did a story on what would you tell the newborn baby? Hmm. If you had a chance to talk to a newborn baby, right, and let them know something that they could remember. I go online and I look up information for newborn babies. I must have a, a thousand articles that come through and I get some ideas. I start to cull from that information and then I go out on the street and talk to people. But Ernie, you sound like you're producing yourself. Yeah, I do. I like it. Like you, you're I, I literally produce producing your own segment, yeah. writing your segment, putting right. it together. Yes. We're going, you know what? As they say, everything old is new again. This is how we started. When we were in the field as reporters doing all of that ourselves, then we elevated to different stations and different markets where you had producers and writers. Now we're back to doing it all by ourselves again. Because a lot of people come to you advi yeah. for advice. I know I have over the years many times. But... When you go and you talk to folks, younger folks in college and other places and mm -hmm. say, Ernie, I want to do what you do, and right. they have no idea what that really means, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they want to be in TV news. To what extent do you try to explain to them, first of all, how incredibly challenging, difficult, competitive it is, but also how much hard work there is, and they're not sitting on an anchor desk right. reading what someone else wrote. How much do you get into that, and do they really want to load a question I know? How much do they really want to hear that? Well, you know what? The first thing I tell them is the only place you'll find success before work is in the dictionary. And you have to make sure you go out there and create what you need to do. Be a self-starter. Create ideas, just like we're talking about. And I want them to know that it's very challenging because it's far more competitive than when you and I started. Right. So they have to understand that there will always be someone out there competing against them. Not to worry about that. Have confidence in yourself. But I want them to have a good education. They have to be able to think. They have to be able to go out on any kind of a general assignment and be able to bring information together, condense it. That's not an easy thing to do, taking a difficult subject sometimes and reducing it to 30 seconds. And so I want them to be educated. I want them to be aware, to communicate with one another. But I also impress one other big thing, values. I talk about values. Do not give up. I have seen so many people destroy themselves because they thought that they were famous. They were making a lot of money. Some of them were they your were colleagues. Per yes, they were personalities on the air and they wanted to just, you know, feel all of this. And in the end, it's a hollow victory. So values are important to understand who you are, where you came from. Don't ever forget that, where mm. you're going and why you're here. I, I tell them one thing that's very important. Instead of striving for success, strive for significance. Big who difference. are you? Describe yes. that. Well, it, it's who you are, saying, okay, I have been given a talent, I've been given a gift to go out there and do this. I want to do it well, but I want to know that after I have reported, after I've covered these stories, and even after I've given it up, and it's time to hang up, you know. Which will happen for all of us. Yeah, it happens. You have to say to yourself, what have I done with my life? What good have I done? Have I made a difference? True success comes from having the ability to help others. That's real success. So if you can go out and say, I made a difference. I had quality reporting on the air, positive news, or whatever it happens or, or to Or your be. book. Talk about your book. Or a book. This is why you wrote book. that book. Yeah, I wrote a book for children called or Ernie and the Big News. Ernie and the Big News. Yeah, and it's a, a positive story about a young reporter who comes into the big city and covers the stories, but they all have happy endings. Mm. And we give you give that book away to a lot of kids. A lot of kids. I speak to uh, so many schools in the New York City area. We, we go to four or 500 kids, as we saw in that picture, at a time, and we'll give them a free copy, St. Francis Food Pantries and Children 
Governors of New York are terrific. We did a big thing at Columbia University. Uh, the school's chancellor, David Walcott, was there. We ended up having a thousand kids that joined us. We invited a thousand children from middle schools, and they came in, and we had a two-hour live program talking about bullying, talking mm. about careers, talking about values, talking about health, Dr. Oz, uh, Wendy Williams, uh, different speakers who are professionals who are able to help us out, psychologists. It was terrific. Now, that was a real give back. So working with young people, to me, is very, very important because they are the, the next generation. You know, Ernie, one of the things that's yeah. always uh, struck me about, about you, um, both working with you but also just watching you over the years, mm -hmm is the whole positive thing, you know? Yeah. And, and there are people who said to me, you know, you, you know, Ernie, that mm -hmm. can't be totally real. <laughs> and I'll say, yeah, it is. And so my question is, given the fact that you report on so much negativity, right. so much uh, crime, corruption, uh, horrible mayhem going on in the world, mm -hmm. where, does, where does that positivity come from? It's got to be a decision that you've made and yeah. keep making over and over and over again, and I don't really know where it comes from. Well, it, it was a, a wonderful gift from my home, from my parents and from my grandparents. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in a small town in New Hampshire, Nashua. And uh, growing up as a young boy, my grandfather was a Greek Orthodox priest. He was one of the first 100 ordained in the United States, a real pioneer. And he left me so many wonderful things, but my dad was the same way, my mother, my sisters. We had a very loving family, and I was always taught to feel good about myself. Self-esteem is one of the greatest gifts we can give a child. Make them feel good about who they are. Doesn't matter about the success, just feeling good about who they are. And I, I was, I was, I just really blessed to have that. So as a result, uh, I remember my, my, my grandfather talking to me and saying that even on a cloudy day. Even when you lose an anchor job, oh, even it, when you whatever, get rejected, exactly. it happens. It happens. But even on a, a very cloudy day, a stormy day, if you're in an airplane and you go up through those clouds and you come up, up above, it's a blue sky and the sun is shining. And so therefore, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're doing, always remember that there is a, a wonderful place for us in life. If we keep doing what we're doing and we're true to ourselves, there's a gift, there's a reward. And, and I, I, I don't like to get into one of these spiritual things because no, that's not the way it is, but I do have faith and that to me is important. I think there's, there's, there's one God and I believe in that and I feel that that has been what has given me the gift to be able to smile, feel good and feel positive mm -hmm. that no matter how bad things are, we can make it better. Saying it is one thing, but living it every day is another, yeah. and that's what you've been doing. So I want to thank you on behalf of everyone in public television, you, and more importantly, yeah. in the broadcasting world, for doing what you've been doing for 35 years, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Come back anytime in public Good television. Good man. Thank, thank you, you Ernie. very much. Congratulations to you, Steve. We're very proud of you. This was fun. Thank you. This was great. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Barnabas Health, Berkeley College, the law firm of Gibbons PC, United Water, Wells Fargo, Verizon Communications, and by New Jersey Natural Gas. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been made possible in part by the Adler Aphasia Center.